right, babies, it's that time again. Oh yeah. I took yesterday off from work, I had a little congestion and I needed to rest and I rested. <laughs> a lot of sleep going on yesterday. So that was a good call. And it was a great way to celebrate the overwhelming win of Trump that was so overwhelming there weren't any riots or you know ransacking uh, businesses <laughs> so that was good it's a good sign fresh start oh yeah baby. let's talk about fresh starts isn't that what we have every day, all day? Oh, yeah. I like that verse in the Bible. I gotta find out where it is. That his mercies are new every morning. Oh, yeah. It always feels fresh. It always feels new. It always feels like a new adventure. Oh, yeah. That's why you can't, you know, you would never wake up and say, <clears throat> All right, I'm ready to end it. Okay, this is the end of my life. Okay, it's my last day. No, because tomorrow is gonna have a fresh beginning all over again. Oh yeah. All because of the presence of God. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> you gotta talk yourself right into holiness, sweetheart. Even if you're in kind of a funk like me, like I'm still kind of in a daze because of being sick yesterday. I gotta say, all right, it's that time. It's that time for me to grab a hold of the reins and co-create with my lover. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> oh. Love my lover. Lover forever. Oh yeah. Doesn't get better than that, honey doesn't get better than that. In fact, somebody uh, commented to me recently and they're telling me um, to uh, be aware or ready for the end of all things where the man of sin is going to raise himself as if he's God in Jerusalem and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and I just told him, hey, for all we know, that's already happened. But regardless, the best way to live your life and to stay in safety, if that's what your concern is, is to keep loving, keep serving, keep being active in the work of God. And then if he wants to fill in these little prophetic details for you, he will, but <clears throat> your foundation is not to be on the lookout for these apocalyptic signs. No, that's a waste of time, baby. They used to do that back in the old days. And those were the days when they decided God was homophobic, misogynistic, vengeful, murderous, in favor of rape and slavery, okay? <laughs> get to where the getting's good honey where the water is fine you're always flowing with God you're always loving you're always serving you're always looking to, to do something to make things better for everyone if not the person right in front of you come on people that's where the life is how do I know that? because when I do that I'm like turned on like a, a like a machine, instead of all like fretful, anxious, worrying about putting prophetic pieces together. Oh my God, what if I miss it? And da -da -da -da. it's a bunch of nonsense. Especially when you get encouraged and emboldened and motivated and inspired and pushed forward without 
much effort at all just because you turn your attention to the goodness of God. Yeah, baby. That's who he is. That's what he does all day long, every day. Oh, yeah, baby. Just like that, honey. That's why I don't worry about, you know, the Bible like I used to. Like, like this guy is all... He's all focused in on this appearance of the man of sin. You know, the, that prophecy was delivered in a time where they thought Jesus was coming back. He didn't come back. So there might be something wrong with some of those thoughts and ideas. In fact, the return of Jesus shouldn't be any more of a concern to us than experiencing him in ourselves. Because he's given us evidence, like I just said, of being with us and helping us so we can have a relationship with him. So we can be more intimate with him than he was with the disciples who ate and drank and lived with him. And they had, mostly had no idea what was going on. But we do. Oh yeah. Because eventually they were brought to a place where they understood and they had to die and they had to be completely sold out to him. So they created the, helped create the path for us to enter into today. Oh yeah. Even though it's 2,000 years ago, baby. It's just as life-giving today as it ever was. To the point where we can discern where the life is when we're reading the Bible and where it's not. <laughs> That's why I'm not worried about it anymore because I just, I just focus on what God's doing. And, you know, he's never telling me, oh, no, Frank, you got to, you didn't read the Bible. You got to read the Bible today. You forgot to read the Bible today. Frank, you got to bring it, you got to create some time to read the Bible today. <laughs> he doesn't do that. He will bring out, if I do happen to read it, he will go, uh-huh, like put his finger on, on a verse or, or on understanding. And I'll be like, uh-huh, okay, yep, I see you there. Or it'll be like, Dude, I'm not anywhere near these passages. <laughs> and I'd be like, I can see that. Oh yeah, it's like that, baby. All day, every day. So we're looking forward to a, a long weekend. Because Veterans Day is a day off in school, which also happens to be my 65th birthday. I can't believe I'm saying that, oh my gosh. I remember when I was I don't know, 19 or 20 years old playing Mary's birthday with a friend of mine, Scott. <laughs> Which was basically this random atonal madness that just emerged from the two of us just because we decided to. <laughs> and it's not not unlike the, the, the power and the creativity of God. Because as we're one with him, we're co-creating with him, meaning we're getting ourselves aligned to the movement and the presence and the purpose of his spirit so that our adventurousness is indistinguishable from each other. Oh yeah. That's what Jesus was saying when he said the Father and I are one. He wasn't saying, hey, look at me, I'm God. No. He was saying, I'm walking with my Father, so I don't need anyone to teach me because my Father 
is leading me and teaching me.